benchmarks and the release date for some upcoming Zen 3 processors from AMD just leaked online, and they look really fast. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So these leaked CPU-Z benchmarks were found over on the website Baidu by VideoCards.com, and if we go ahead and take a look at these results, it's what appears to be a Ryzen 9 5900X. Yes, you heard me right, 5900X, not 4900X, because the most recent rumors are pointing towards the fact that apparently these Zen 3 processors are going to be named 5000 instead of 4000 now, so that they line up with some upcoming mobile parts to make it just a little bit less confusing. Though, I'll you know, saying all that, it is a little bit confusing still, but in any case, if we go ahead and take a look at these results we can see that it gets a score of 652.8 in the single threaded benchmark and you know that sounds really impressive but we don't really have a whole lot to compare it to though they do show some 3700x benchmarks below it or it you know beats it handily but I wanted to go ahead and take this result here and compare it to not only a stock 9900 KF but also my own heavily tuned 3900 XT and I do mean heavily tuned because not only does it have an all core overclock where we're looking at I believe I have three cores at 4.55 gig gigahertz three cores at 4.5 gigahertz and the other six at 4.45 gigahertz so a pretty heavy overclock right there but on top of that I also tuned the memory and overclocked it as well as the infinity fabric so we're looking at results that are 3800 megahertz on the memory uh, with the infinity fabric in a one-to-one -one ratio and the memory timings have been tuned down to 15 14 14 30 for the main timing so this is a very heavily tuned 3900 XT and so I'm going to go ahead and compare those results here so if we go ahead and we take 652.8 score from the 5900X and we compare it to my own 562.1 on the single threaded benchmark. What we can see here is that the 5900X is still 16.1% faster in that single threaded result, which is very, very impressive considering how large of an overclock I have applied to this 3900 XT. And on top of that, the XT model is better than the X, which most people are going to have a 3900X to compare it to. Now, when we go ahead and take a look at that multi threaded result here, we can see it's a little bit less impressive, but again, that's down to the fact that I have an all core overclock going on here and each individual CCX has been individually targeted to get the highest possible result. But we can see here that it only gets 4.1% higher in the multi-core score compared to my own 3900 XT. So again, not super impressive there. Though, now if we go ahead and take a look at the 9900 KF, which by the way, my 3900 XT does beat in CPU-Z, we can see that the 5900X is 20.2% faster. And that is extremely impressive because for a long time, here, AMD was very much struggling, even in synthetic benchmarks, to overtake Intel's single-threaded performance. So seeing that AMD is now handily beating them by a significant margin is very impressive. Now, one thing we don't know for sure is, were they able to get the latency down enough where we'll actually see a 20% improvement in the frame rate in actual games? Or is this going to be more like where we see that AMD is going to be, you know, their single-threaded performance is technically better in benchmarks, but in games, unfortunately, their latency is going to be a little bit higher. And and then they really won't be beating until by too much. That's something that we don't quite know for sure yet, but if we go ahead and take a look at the specs here, I think a lot of that can be answered. And before we go ahead and take a look at those specs, I just want to say if you're as excited as I am for these Ryzen 4000 slash 5000 CPUs to come out, I really suggest that you do go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I will be live streaming the launch event on the 8th, so make sure you're subscribed to that. And if you do like this type of content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's try and get above 3000 likes. But in any case, taking a look at what the specs are from various leaks and rumors and things that I've been told, here's what I believe the main specs are going to look like. So obviously for the microarchitecture, we're looking at Zen 3, and then for the core count on the 5900X, it's going to be 12 cores and 24 threads. We are likely to see another 16 core flagship this generation. And then taking a look at the design here, in terms of the CCX layout, we're probably going to be looking at 8 core CCXs this time, as opposed to the quad core CCXs that we had in the Ryzen 3000 series. And so this is significant because when we move over from using quad-core CCXs to an 8-core design, that means that there's less traveling between the Infinity Fabric, which in theory should be able to eliminate a significant amount of that latency. Now, of course, if they do have to go across from one 8-core CCD to the other 8-core CCD to get to that other CCX, then yes, it's going to have to go across the Infinity Fabric, but they're going to have a whole lot more access to cache, 
which is really, really impressive and very important. So personally, I'm kind of expecting to see here that AMD is going to get their latency a lot closer to Intel, but I'm kind of expecting to see that Intel is going to have a slight lead in that latency still. So even though we're seeing that it's, you know, somewhere around 20% faster in CPU Z than say the 9900KF, well, in reality in games, maybe it'll only be, you know, 15, 16% faster. We'll just have to wait and see. But talking about the cache, here we're going to see, I believe, the exact same design, 64 megabytes of L3 plus 8 megabytes of L2, which of course you get 4 megabytes per CCX, giving you a total of 72 megabytes of cache. And then finally for the clocks here, I'm expecting to see the same 3.8 gigahertz base clock, but we're probably going to see on the 12 core model a 4.9 gigahertz boost. Now I know there were some 5 gigahertz numbers going around, but I think they're going to reserve that 5 gigahertz number for their absolute silicon lottery best chip on the market, which will of course be their 16 core model, just like how last time around the uh, 3900X was hitting 4.6 gigahertz as a boost, but the 3950X was actually hitting 3. Or, sorry, 4.7. Now finally, let's talk about that release date, and apparently it was leaked over on Twitter by the user Yuri Bubbly, who goes by at 1USMUS, and he's actually, if you don't know who he is, he's the guy who created the Ryzen tuner as well as the memory tuner, so this guy has a lot of experience, and you know, on top of that, he has leaked out a few things before, and I do find him very, very trustworthy, so what he says here, I do have a lot of faith in, and over on Twitter, he said 20th on shelves in reply to a videocards.com post, and then video cards replied with Zen 3 question mark, and he said yes, and they said October, and he said Zen 3 20th of October 5800X slash 5900X. Then he also said Navi 2 15 to 20th of November. He goes on to say this is old information but I can see that AMD has not adjusted their plans. So again this guy is pretty credible and what he's saying makes a whole lot of sense. I mean if they do have a launch event on the 8th and then they're going to actually have the processors purchasable by the 20th of October well that makes a lot of sense to me as that gives them a little bit of time to make sure all the retailers have it in stock. All of the you know information that they reveal at the event gets put on the websites everything's ready to go so overall looks like we're just a little bit under a month away and it's looking even faster than a lot of us were expecting but hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these upcoming Zen 3 processors? Are you impressed by their performance or are you underwhelmed? I'd like to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.